Hello and welcome to This Week in Agriculture, a presentation of the Communications Unit, Ministry of Agriculture. I'm your host, Christopher Holder. On this week's presentation, we feature the uh, technical staff of the research station of the Ghana Rice Development Board as we look at paddy bug management in rice cultivation. We'll be focusing on the importance of you being proactive in your approach to the management of uh, this pest as it can result in economic losses at the end of that crop. With us in studio today, we have the Deputy General Manager in the person of Ms. Allison Peters. We have from the research station, Dr. Mahendra Pasad. He is the chief scientist there. We have the extension manager, uh, Mr. Bissessar Pasad, and we have the entomologist, uh, the person who will be guiding us through this special edition of uh, This Week in Agriculture, Dr. Vivian Baharali. I'd like to welcome you all to the special edition of uh, This Week in Agriculture. Uh, we will begin with you, Alison. Uh, the focus here is to have farmers be um, proactive rather than reactive to this particular pest. Um, the GRDB has been recommending, uh, recommending an integrated approach to the management of pests and disease um, and weeds and all that. Um, paddy bug management is a critical area uh, of this business of rice cultivation. Just, just give us an idea of the approach that the GRDB has adopted and this uh, publicity uh, or public awareness program that you've launched to ensure that our farmers are on top of paddy bug management even though it's this early in the crop. Thank you, Chris, for having us here. And it's not so early in the crop. Um, Dr. Vivian will let you know that from as early as 3rd to 5 days, um, it becomes critical during the life of the plant, and I don't want to steal her thunder, so I will let her expand on that when she gets to that end. But the approach from the Ghana Rice Development Board um, is to have, as you said, an integrated approach. Um, paddy bug management, while you state, has serious economic consequences for a farmer who is inflicted with high paddy bug levels. And it's not only the Ghana Rice Development Board, the farmer has a responsibility. We as technical persons will support him during this crop life. And it's a national it's national business. The regions where you come from, because the land, a lot of their land are state lands, and the mares and dams are state um, lands also, and the paddy bug does not always restrict itself to a particular farm. So, having said that, it's an integrated approach in terms of everyone's involvement. Why we're here um, this early, as you would want to say, last crop, we knew we had some high levels of paddy bulk um, infestation in some of the regions, especially Region 2. And we want to make sure that we are here guiding the farmer along very early and ensure that he takes our recommendations because sometimes we can give recommendations and it's not always adopted. So we're here. We're going to be in the regions. We're going to be with farmers in their field through the extension and also from the um, scientist view, and we'll have public awareness, of which this is maybe the first. All right, um, Dr. Mahendra, you, you are there at the research station, and you've sent out these uh, varieties, which are disease resistant for the most part, but again, vulnerable to paddy bug uh, attacks and so on. Uh, but you have been uh, engaging farmers at every stage of, of the crop. And so this, of course, comes naturally. Uh, Vivian will be going out. You've been going out meeting with um, uh, farmers. And this is not something new in terms of, of educating farmers about what the, uh, needs to be done in terms of properly managing their crop. Um, over the years, um, what has been your experience with farmers adopting and applying the, the measures as recommended by the research station in terms of not only paddy bug management, but generally? 
thanks, Chris. Um, for, for, first and foremost, um, party work uh, management um, is not an easy task. And it's not an easy task from where we sit as researchers um, to, to find the different solutions that farmers are looking at. And from where we know the farmers are operating, it's not very easy for them to manage um, paddy bog. And that we have seen over, over the years. Um, there are variable levels of uh, control, not control, um, management um, success in farmers' field. Some farmers are more successful than some farmers. And um, when we have looked at um, what the approaches each farmer would have used, many farm some farmers um, stick to to the, the the recommendations that we would have given them. Um, they would have had some pieces based on their experience. Um, those are the farmers um, that stick to the recommendation and are more innovative, um, would have good level of control for the paddy bog. Mind you, it's not an easy task out there. Um, some farmers are very erratic in their approach to not manage paddy bog alone their entire crop. And the serious nature of this um, pest um, demands um, continuous monitoring, with Dr. Barali will tell you that, and um, a quick follow-up action. And if that's not in place, um, uh, we're always going to be in, in, in the dilemma of having um, inflated rates of um, damages. Um, so we have to be very, very, um, very um, proactive, very scientific, and very swift in our operation in, 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 in the way moving forward. And that we, that's our basic plan. All right. And a critical uh, aspect of the work of the GIDB has been extension. You, the man at the head of uh, this uh, department of this, this important aspect of the GIDB's operation extension. And you've been carrying this message to farmers across the country, not only this crop, but you've been doing it in previous crops. Uh, I know you're new to this uh, the helm of, of extension, but what has been your experience in terms of, of farmers adopting the, the measures as, as recommended by your team? Thanks, Chris. Um, Firstly, I must say that um, GRDB has a vibrant and strong extension program working with the farmers to ensure that they have a safe and productive crop for a season. And these programs are being executed through the Pharma Field School. And the Pharma Field School really is a group based learning process or a participatory approach whereby farmers meet together in a particular district and um, whereby they share and interact and discuss topic areas on rice such as the choice of variety for planting, the time of planting for a particular season, the seed rate and seed treatment program that we have in place, and also weed and water management, and of course, an integrated pest management approach. When we talk about the integrated pest management approach, that is very critical for the managing of paddy bog and other insect pests. And of course, so, um, mentioned earlier by our Deputy General Manager, it is important for us to monitor this pest throughout the cropping season. And currently, the extension officers of GRDB are doing daily monitoring for paddy bug once the crop would have attained 60 days after sowing until harvesting. And they usually use the sweep net method to monitor for paddy bog and based on the result from that sweeping they will advise the farmer whether to spray or not. Additionally to monitoring we also do paddy bog demonstration. So the purpose of that demonstration is to demonstrate to farmers the effective control measures that they should adopt to minimize and 
eradicate this pest. And these demonstrations done under the farmer field school at the guidance of our extension officer with the farmers. And we also look at the recommended chemical and rate to be used. We also demonstrate the time of application. And Dr. Baharali, um, in her recommendation, the farmers who have to spray for paddy bog normally spray after 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And also one critical area is the walking distance. We are recommending to farmers that do not use more than 22 feet or 11 footsteps apart to have um, control. And apart from the chemical control, we are advising farmers to keep the mares and surroundings free from board seed grass and in the field to remove all um, unwanted plants, for example, the schoonard grass and the red rice. Those are alternate hosts that harbor the paddy bog. And in closing, mm -hmm. we ask the, are asking the farmers to assist us in monitoring their field also. So, and submit those report to us that, so we can able to be more proactive and in dealing with the severeness of body bulk. All right, so we now come to the lady of the moment, Dr. Vivian Baharali, uh, the foremost expert on paddy bugs and uh, everything you need to know about paddy bugs. This is the single most important threat to uh, rice, rice cultivation or the success of a, a, a particular crop. Um, what do we need to know about the insect itself? And then we'll talk a little about how they go about managing uh, this in a scientific manner. All right, thank you, Christopher. The gist about paddy bugs is that it occurs naturally. Nobody has, well, has been found to be rearing paddy bugs and releasing it into the environment. It's a natural phenomenon, and the only thing we can do right now <coughs> is to manage them as they come. Paddy bugs invade the rice fields. We know that they migrate, the migration occurs at dusk, which is in the evenings. So in order to effectively trap them and kill them is to know when they invade. That is why monitoring plays a very key role, and all of the speakers would have mentioned the proactive approach in detecting the bug, and it is important that we kill the adults as they arrive. So as it is, um, the, the whole integrated approach is to ensure that farmers in, in a large area plant close to the same um, sowing date, and I would say that about 500 acres or so would, would um, be defined as a block. So we, we insist on block planting. We know that um, the bird seed grass, the red rice, the schoonard grass, they are alternate hosts. They provide food and shelter, as well as the broadleaf um, weeds also provide shelter. So it's important that we <coughs> conduct um, proper field sanitation measures, which is to get rid of these alternate hosts. Another point is that the bugs will invade at the time food is available, which is why we insist on monitoring from 30 to 35 days after sowing, because at that time, the alternate hosts have food available. They bloom at that time, so the bugs invade and survive on these weeds. At that, from that point, if we don't apply the control measures, which is to spray them with an insecticide right now, you can have three to four generations of paddy bugs within a crop cycle. <coughs> the other key aspect of managing paddy bug is to limit the feeding time. As long as the bugs pierce a grain, damage is important. So the 
less time you have the bugs in the field, the better the chances that your damage, your percent damage will be low. So we are recommending as it relates to monitoring to do that in the morning, preferably with the sweep net because you know exactly what the numbers are. And when you say morning, what, what, what are the hours um, ideal for this? Before 8.30 in the morning, and that's particularly critical during the flowering period of the crop because you can mechanically damage the, the, the panicle if you go in to the rice field when the flowers are open for pollina pollination and fertilization. So I am, rec well, the, the GRDB is recommending that we monitor in the morning. So because the bugs invade at dusk, you monitor in the morning you know that those bugs would have arrived in the rice field or in the area the evening before. If the numbers are alarming, which is, um, let's say, 25 bugs in 50 sweeps or approaching 25 bugs in 50 sweeps, you should apply an insecticide by the afternoon. The and same afternoon? The same afternoon. So in that case, you limit the time that the bugs are allowed to feed. Most importantly, during the hotness of the day, they go down to the base of the plant to hide. So no feeding occurs during that time. So again, you limit the time that the bugs are spent in the field to start feeding. And because of feeding, that is what causes the damage. All right. So uh, talk us through the mechanics of managing this pest with the insecticides and so on. You have some specific rates, some specific application techniques and all that. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. All right. The first thing you need to do is to remove the alternate host as early as possible because that encourages them. Once you do that, when the bugs invade, they will invade at the time the crop is susceptible, which is from the heading stage through flowering, through milk stage, through dough stage, and they can be present in the field until the crop is ready to harvest. If they invade during the flowering period, you get wind grains, you, you don't have any paddy to harvest. If they invade during the milk stage, you get um, half-filled grains. If they invade during the dough stage, you get the pecky grains, that's where the black spot. Um, that is really when the black spot appears on the grain. If they invade close to harvesting, you they will attempt to feed. The dam the pierce is there on the grain and it also has the black spot on it, even if it's a pinhead size of a spot. So um all those stages of the rice crop the bug can damage. Now you want to prevent that as much as possible. You monitor the 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 the, num the number of bugs indicate that well you have to spray. Spraying is the most critical thing at the moment because if you don't mix the chemical properly, you don't have effective coverage, you don't um, use the right dose rates, you will not get effective control. Another thing why it's important to remove the alternate hose is that when you are applying the chemical, instead of spraying onto the rice crop, you are spraying onto the weeds. So the rice remains on, on touch with the insecticide, the bugs can survive, continue to survive on those plants. How, how do you manage to do that? To remove the, 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 the weeds? To end up spraying on weeds <laughs> instead of the crop. Th that is why paddy bug management is not a one a one stop shot. It's a process. Yes. That starts from the time you decide to cultivate rice, you have to start thinking paddy bug management. So, so walk us through from the beginning of the crop all the way through. Land preparation. It is important that you have proper land preparation, good land leveling and so on. That helps you to control the weeds. Mm -hmm. Block planting. You have an, an entire area. It, it allows for area-wide management. In the case of invasions, you can control that area easily without having different stages of rice crop in that area. Field sanitation, removal of the alternate host from early, as early as 30, 35 days after sowing, so that there is no food available to encourage 
the invasion of bugs at that stage. And if you have invasions at that stage and you don't kill the bugs, you can continue to have successive generations. And until 110 days, you can have four, three to four generations in that crop. Most farmers cultivate up in, in their land preparations will focus mainly on their plot of land. Mm -hmm. So the bush around is not their responsibility. Um, I understand that the GRDB has been approaching uh, the regional democratic councils to help in uh, leveling some of the bushy areas around rice fields to remove the alternative hosts. Um, but in, in, in approaching this, would you recommend that in the absence of help from outside, that farmers pay attention to the bush around? Definitely. Um, it is so important for them to manage so that the, the crop that they plant does not get any damage from paddy bugs. It, it, it's not only um, the GRDB or the NDC. At the end of the day, it is the rice field that is around that area that would be susceptible. So um, being vigilant, knowing when the bugs are there and killing them and getting rid of the alternate host, that's the way we have to manage paddy bugs. We will get to the chemicals of choice in just a moment and, and rates that you, you have recommended. But um, seed rate application, does that affect uh, the paddy bug management in any way? If you put too much or too little? Not directly, but it might, um, you, you, you might have a, a, a uh, I'm looking at um, the way they shelter from yes. the sun and um, they, they can go they can go down and hide from the, the insecticide for instance by the time they come up and more more or less it would affect them with the, um, the shelter they have. All right so you've done your sweeping you've uh, ascertained that there is need for uh, the application of pesticides. Mm -hmm. You have some specific recommendations uh, some do's and don'ts in your pest pesticide application efforts um, let's talk first about the chemicals of choice and then the rates per acre and so on. All right. The chemical of choice depends on the stage of the crop. If it is not in the susceptible period, which is from heading to harvesting, then a contact insecticide can be used because you want... Quick knockdown. Fast knockdown. You, you just want to kill the adults then. If the crop is approaching the susceptible stage, you can use a systemic insecticide, and that would give you um, long-term protection. However, if you spray with a systemic insecticide today, and you have another invasion a few days later, you can use a contact insecticide, because the ultimate objective is to kill the adults as they arrive. Yes. All right? So, um, so even In after spring, they must you, continue monitoring? You, you, they must continue monitoring. We recommend that you go back and start monitoring after you spray your field, 36 hours after. Because um, you don't want to go into a field that has just been sprayed with an insecticide. Um, it's more or less protection for, for the person. And um, from 36 hours after spraying, you need to start monitoring again daily to be able to detect when the other invasion will come. So as the invasions come, you decide to spray based on what's happening on the ground. So it's not basically a question of maybe they might come. No. Chances are they well, will we come. Well, don't, we don't, um, we want to, to spray, to apply an insecticide based on the target. You don't want to spray for an insect that is not present. Because when it comes, you still have to spray again. And then the whole integrated pest management approach, it does not only target um, uh, killing killing an insect, but it looks at the environment and so many other things, the buildup of resistance, for instance. Has that been a problem, uh, paddy bugs building up resistance to the usual chemicals used? We have not concluded on that as yet, but chances are that is so that, 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 that can happen. So to avoid that, what would you recommend? All right, so rotation of insecticides. If you use, let's say, um, pronto today, and you have to spray again two days, three days later, you use another insecticide, 
a contact which might be fast stock or best stock or fenny to tie on. So you have a difference in, um, with the insecticides being contact or systemic. Now farmers um, sometimes confuse the two and um, I would really want to impress that they contact their extension officer at the time they're deciding to spray or they have to spray to, for them to help them in deciding which is the best at the time they have to spray. So, um, mixing two insecticides. At the research station, we have determined that a systemic insecticide has both contact and systemic properties. So as the bug gets in contact with it on the surface, they die. As well as if they feed on the plant after that, they also die. So it, we, it, it does not make sense economically to add a contact insecticide to a systemic if you're going to get the same job from the systemic. And at the same time, we're um, preventing the cocktails or the mixing that will allow for resistance to build up later on. So that helps us to rotate the insecticides as much as possible, which is why it all depends on what is happening at the rice field, the stage of the crop, what you would have done before, and so on. What are the other dangers of, of mixing chemicals and putting it all together? I know, I know it's an economic effort on their part to cut cost and so on, but what are the dangers of mixing up a whole heap of chemicals? And right. Some other disadvantages is that one, one might have a negative effect on the other, which would make it not effective, or the entire solution will not be um, insecticidal anymore. And there are certain things you can check for when mixing two insecticides or two pesticides per se. If it curdles like spoiled milk or coagulates, it is not going to be effective anymore. If it pr produces a heat, it is not likely to be effective anymore. If it fizzes, it is not likely. To, it, there's a, it means that there is a chemical, chemical reaction, reaction with the mix. So that, those are some of um, the other disadvantages of mixing. But the, the basic thing is to encourage rotation. You use one today, you use another tomorrow, so that you don't give the pest a chance to become accustomed to one. Because if resistance is built up, that's another serious issue we'll have to deal with. Application rates uh, per acre, well, per spray can in the first place, or, mist, or, or blower, mm -hmm. and then per acre. You know, well, there, there's this argument about how much uh, spray cans you should apply to an acre, or, or, you know. Yes, well, the extension manager did mention um, effective coverage with two cans. What we found is that if you use one motor blower per acre, there isn't an overlap of the spray solution. As compared to using two cans per motor blower, you get proper wetness on the plant by the spray solution and that is what you want because you don't want to leave gaps where the bugs can survive or gaps where they barely got a, a mist of the insecticide and they evolve to um, survive that and then their offspring become resistant to it. That is how resistance is built up over a period of time. You survive it and your offspring is um, or will also survive it and the offspring of that offspring also survives it so no matter what you do after that you're not going to be able to get effective control with an insecticide so um, the two motor blowers per acre gives you effective coverage and um, good wetness of the solution on the plant the insects are supposed to die once they come in contact with that plant at the time of spraying or days after that. Was there any uh, difference in angle of application? You spray up in the air and spray down directly? Well, well yes. What should be the, the ideal? The nozzle should be pointing away from the spray person, the spray man, and it should be just above the height of the rice plant. So the mist does not, the mist travels in one direction and it doesn't have far to go. So it falls almost immediately onto the plant and you get that wetness thoroughly. To do otherwise is to risk 
not, not being having effective. effective control. Yes. All right. Um, so, so tell me about the the outreach that you have have initiated. Um, what are you going to be doing out in the field with our farmers? All right. First, we assess the level of infestation. How how many well. Um, you're going to be sweeping. Yes, you can. You can tell if the bugs have just invaded, or if they have invaded for a number of days and started to disperse themselves. It is easy to tell that at the at the site at the at, at the field level. So we're going to detect. We're going to try to make that assessment. Check for the spread of the bugs. How far they have dispersed themselves, and then demonstrate to farmers how they can get effective control by applying the right insecticide at the right time, at the right dose rates, in the right manner. She'll be conducting demonstrations. Across the country, yes. Yeah. All right. The, the result of not properly managing a crop in terms of your, your monitoring and other measures that are recommended by the GIDB and ensuring that your pest damage is minimized how does that impact a bad manager at the end of the crop? He takes his paddy to the mill. What happens? I suppose that's a question for me, Chris. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, coming out of quality mm -hmm. control uh, for okay. several years, one of, the, one of the highest factors that determines your price is the damaged grain. Dr. Vivian did mention bin grains, that also, because if you have unfilled grains, it will go to the dockage. And that will mean that now you will have to give the miller more weight to compensate that you don't have grains filled for them to shell and mill into the rice, because that's their business. So unfilled grains goes to dockage, and once you, um, the paddy bug has pierced the grain, becomes black, small dot, uh, large round dot. If they, it's a large dot, sometimes the grains become weak and that um, causes some of the grains to even break and become soft from the sucking um, action that the paddy bob would have had. And all in all, the grain is, the quality of the paddy is poor. And you can move from different grades of you might not be able to get an x-ray paddy. You might go as low down as a sample grade, which is the lowest grade. And once you start going to sample grade, different things apply in terms of your payment at the mill. Um, any paddy damage we know, above 3.5% damage grains, you go down into the sample grade. This has been reviewed from this crop to 4.5, but it's still slim because we notice that sometimes people get 30% damage, 20% damage, and that means that so much more paddy is needed to make a bag of rice. So the farmer feels if they do not manage this paddy bulk throughout the life of the crop, they will feel it at a gate in the terms of a lower, lower price for a paddy because they will not be able to get an extra A at A grade, even a B grade, it starts to go down. And um, farmers normally talk about cost of production, and if you're barely um, getting a little margin, the lower the quality, your margin reduces. So you need to be able to keep damage out, and not only damage, you have other things, red grains and, and so on, that you can also manage but paddy bog because you know when you you know Chris the layman knows they buy white rice or they buy parboiled rice and you notice the black dots yeah. and right away you don't want to have that I don't want to have that the housewife doesn't want to pick and um, a miller will have to do more to remove that um, damage cream from the um, the rice you have to sort eggs and you have to do other things so I have seen very good paddy um, during my time, and it all goes to management. But as um, Dr. Vivian and the other speakers would have said, it's holistic because I might be treating my field, and I have a very poor farmer next door to me. 
So we really have to um, work together with each other to ensure that the, um, we keep paddy bog levels down. Because at the end of the day, the farmer loses economically. He might not be able to go back into the crop because his income is very poor or non-existent. And that affects production countrywide and our exports um, can drop because we don't have enough um, production um, for the miller to export and so it's critical that's why we're here and all in all a rice or paddy that is infested with paddy bulb management the black color the la be it large or small it's ugly and um, it's not we don't want to have rice with that look and it's a cost to the farmer because he loses income. So spray, and sometimes farmers will tell you to spray three, four, five times, six times, but as Dr. Maharali would have said, you have to do it systematically. Just don't, don't just spray because you think paddy bug will come and I spray as a prevention. Right? So we want to talk to the farmers out there. The alternate hose, I hear you talking about the alternate hose. And like I would tell millers, it's just keeping the place clean. You know, you just weed and, you, you know, it's there. And once it's there, the paddy box will get on it. Just, so just keep your place clean. It's part of sanitation. And once they alternate hose, which is your weeds, basically, the unwanted um, rice plant, you just keep them away from your surroundings. And so the paddy box will not be there. So all in all, this is our... Um, what we want to tell farmers and ask them to, to assist because when the paddy bog would have invaded their field and they have low income we feel it just as much as them because production goes down and as other things that I mentioned before um, they can't feed their families the way they want to the way they planned so they have to help us the the, the question of block planting and planting in season has been uh, one of the key messages that you've been uh, sharing. Um, are you satisfied that the message is, is registering with our farmers? Do you see more of this happening? I know in certain areas it's very spaced out. Uh, so in those areas, perhaps... The, the extension manager um, may be able to attest to that a little more. But there are several several things that I don't want to allude to on, on this program that may cause a farmer not to be able to plant at the time he may want to plant. Um, one of it could be the weather condition at the time. Um, some of it is financing. We don't want to, to fla um, not flag that. And so when those things are available, then is when he will go in. Because you might think that a farmer is going in too late to plant and it's outside of the season. But then he might have money for the bank and he will want to take a chance and he say he will take a chance and hope things go well. But then the person, the, the farmer next door to him is way up in the season and then all the pests coming from that, um, that farmer may visit his field and then he has continual problem and it might not be a good. Sometimes it might be better to just wait on a crop. But is a farmer's business and ultimately he takes those decisions when he wants to plan. But those persons, they would need to engage more of what uh, Dr. Bairali has been saying, closer moni monitoring and so on, be sharper. Yes. As it were. In the there field. will be more work for them if they go outside of the season and the period that we recommend. And there are defined periods that we recommend for planting in each region. And um, it goes with the water too. Water management helps weeds. And if you go outside when I need water and, and I, I shut off, I, I use my water and I shut off, and then you don't need water, it, it creates a, a whole mix-up. And uh, I know of a few um, members, board members and, and, and farmers who have been calling for the water schedule, because block planting goes with water schedule too, you know. Um, growing of rice requires a lot of water management. So those things... Um, the block planting, how good it is now, if it is effective, how many people are using. Maybe the extension manager, because yeah. with his interaction with the farmers <coughs> out there, 
Can I tell us something more? The floor is yours. I want to fully support the point on block planting that DGM has mentioned earlier. And um, I can tell you for this, for Scrap 2019, uh, more than 80% of the rice cultivation has, a, has been done within the soil period. And one point to bring out strongly here, that we are encouraging farmers to um, sow on time, is to benefit the maximum sunlight at the time of flowering. Mm -hmm. Because if you're out of the sowing period, you, you will not capture that sunlight at the time of flowering. And that definitely reduce your yield mm -hmm. and brings on wind paddy. Mm -hmm. So farmers are again asked to plant on time <coughs> and for the first crop or the spring crop, it's the 15th of November to the 31st of December. Some farmer goes <coughs> like a week in January or so on, but we are not encouraging farmers to plant late January or February. Okay, so so you think that it has been catching on this question of why they need to uh, yes, plant in Yes, farmers are doing block planting from a long time now, but for some reasons, farmers, some farmers do not go with the block planted. There are so many factors behind of it. And and this question of the two spray cans or two mess blowers per acre. Um, I know I know some farmers want to save on, on you know, pesticide costs perhaps, but you may save on the pesticide application and lose out on the end in terms of what you harvest, the quality of what you harvest. Definitely. We always encourage a farmer to go for a two moto blower per acre because you have a complete wet test of the plant and a more effective spray. And what happens when you do two spray can per acre is that you reduce other exposure of insecticide, other sprays. You save other spray that instead of make applying, when you apply one blower per acre, sometimes farmers do three, four applications. But when you do the two blower per acre, you do one or two for the cropping season. So that again you <laughs> save on um, against doing the one per acre. Okay. Uh, you want to add anything on this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. I want to uh, thank you all for taking the time to come chat with uh, me here on This Week in Agriculture. Um, for those of you who are out in the uh, outlying areas, region two, well, they're coming your way soon. Uh, by the time this program air, I do believe they would have visited your area already. But they're going to be coming to uh, the quarantine, uh, Burbis, Region 5, Region 6, uh, Region 4. They're going to be visiting all your rice fields. And uh, so, therefore, uh, we want you to be on the lookout, be part of the demonstrations that will be offered in terms of all aspects relative to the treatment uh, of uh, paddy bugs. Uh, treatment for prevention of, of paddy bugs, if you like. And so they will be showing you how to mix the thing, how to apply it in the field, how to go about uh, with the sweet net method. Um, we've had infomercials on air showing you uh, what it is you have to do in, in this regard. And so, again, th this may be just a reminder to you uh, that this is how it's done, and so that you can um, be able to apply the same methods in your rice field with positive results. So once again, uh, on behalf of the entire production team, uh, we're recording in the studios of NCN today. And uh, the post-editing facilities provided by Matrix Video Productions and Advertising based in East Burbese. So I want to thank you all again for coming. And for those of you who sat through this program with us, we certainly thank you for doing that. Until next time then, Christopher Holder saying so long. Be good to yourselves and to each other.
The Guyana Rice Development Board is reminding farmers that the effective use of insecticides for managing paddy bugs require the following steps. Mix the insecticide properly. Fill the motor blower or spray can halfway with water. If insecticide is a powder or granule, then dissolve the recommended rate in a bucket before adding it to the half-filled blower or spray can. If the insecticide is a liquid, then add the recommended rate directly into the half-filled blower or spray can. Shake the containers containing water and insecticide add water up to the 13 liter mark then shake again the spray man is now ready to spray determine the swath based on the wind direction and speed ensure overlap of the spray mixture for best results be warned that in order to be effective the spray swat needs to overlap, especially when there are more than one worker applying at the same time. If the spray swats do not overlap, the bugs will thrive in the unsprayed areas. They will continue to feed and multiply. A message from the GRDB Ministry of Agriculture. A key component of the integrated approach to pest management in rice cultivation is effective monitoring of the rice plants with a view to detecting the presence of pests at the earliest possible time. The GRDB is recommending that in addition to visually monitoring the field for any signs of pests, farmers incorporate the sweep method to determine when it's necessary to engage in the application of pesticides to eradicate any economic threats to the crop. Of serious economic consequence is the dreaded paddy bug. Monitoring of the crop both visually and by way of the sweep net should begin as early as 30 days into the life of the crop or at panicle initiation. With the sweep net, if the number of bugs caught is one for every two sweeps, then that is the threshold and it is time to spray. In visual monitoring, it is one bug for every meter square. The decision to spray insecticide is decided upon based on threshold, which is why monitoring is so important. Untimely spraying can cause destruction of natural enemies that serve as biocontrol agents, especially against the paddy bug. These beneficial insects include the ladybug beetles, dragonflies, spiders, etc. In applying the insecticides, determine the swath or width of the spray based on the wind direction and speed. Ensure overlap of the spray mixture for best results. Note that if the spray mixture does not overlap, the bugs will thrive in the unsprayed areas. They will continue to feed and multiply and return to the other areas of the field after the insecticide has dissipated. A message from the GRDB Ministry of Agriculture. The Guyana Rice Development Board is reminding all farmers that an integrated pest management program is the best way to ensure a successful, high-yielding crop. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, is the use of several compatible control strategies to suppress a pest. IPM is for the management of all insect pests and snails or even weeds, whether it's early season, mid-season, or late season. This program begins at land preparation and involves the following key steps. After proper tillage, leave land exposed to sun for a few days to allow for pests in the soil to be exposed to natural predators as well as to allow for degradation of any debris there. Proper land leveling should also be ensured. Farmers should adopt uniform times of sowing. Sowing in block during the April, May and November, December periods of the year. All farmers should treat their seed before sowing, providing insect pest protection to the young rice plants for up to 30 days. Ensure proper water management for the first 40 days of the crop. Ensure effective monitoring of the crop from the vegetative stage or the presence of paddy bugs or other pests. This will aid the farmer in determining the right time to apply the appropriate insecticide to kill the paddy bugs. A message from the Guyana Rice Development Board, Ministry of Agriculture.